All right, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you so much for, for coming, and let's get this thing kicked off. So I wanted to start by just sharing the story of, of CoreOS and, and where we started and where we're going. So this is a, a, a photo um, from Brandon, our CTO, co-founder's desk. I took this the other day, and I wanted to point something out um, for you. No, it's not the, the black and orange wrestling mask. That's not what I mean. I mean this little note. So let's, let's zoom up on that. All right, so when Brandon and I started CoreOS, um, we set out to see what we could do about fundamentally improving the security of the internet. And this is Brandon's little note that he leaves on his desk uh, to remind him sort of what we're focused on and, and what we're trying to do. So we think that updates are the key to this. We think that there will always be another vulnerability, another patch that needs to be deployed. And if we can make server infrastructure reliable enough that we can constantly be deploying and patching, uh, that, that we can have a shot at securing the internet. Um, to do this, it requires containers. It requires clustering. And I'll ignore the rest of the things on this slide, including the, the gnome Christmas ornament. <laughs> Brandon, you have some weird stuff on your desk. Um, all right, so what did we do next? We started building. Um, this was just under two years ago. This was our office. Like all good startups, we got going in a garage in Palo Alto. Turns out that was more expensive per square foot than the venue you were in right now. But um, it, we had to get started uh, that way, no less. Um, our idea was, let's see if we can build this self-updating uh, OS and everything required to do it. And about, about 22 months ago, we shipped our first set of products. An, an initial release of etcd, that was 0.1.0, um, and CoreOS Linux Alpha. So the Alpha version of CoreOS shipped then. Uh, we did that, that was about five folks on the team at that point, and we pushed forward. So next, the team grew a little bit. Um, everyone's smiling in this photo uh, because that was the first day we had been outside in five days straight. Uh, we did a Tahoe trip, which turned into a, literally nobody left the house for five days, but we shipped some important things like cloud config and the user image, uh, which became the basis of our stable release. Next, um, the Go programming language is a very important thing to us. Um, and so about a year ago, we, we made it to the inaugural GopherCon, um, borrowed a friend's uh, motor coach, and we all learned how to drive a 25,000-pound vehicle. Um, this was, you can tell we weren't that great at it. We had a little issue with the ladder on the back there. Brandon was checking to see if we actually put a hole in the roof or not. Um, but we did this because Go enabled some of these technologies that we weren't able to build before, things like etcd, the, the combination of performance and, and, uh, and distributed, um, excuse me. etcd was enabled by Go because it gave us a performance and concurrency required to build this product in an easy way, and we think that that's, that's something that enabled us to get to where we are. Next, just under a year ago, we held our very first meetup. Um, this was at the Rackspace office just down the street. One thing I'd like to point out here, let's see if I can do this. Uh, one little unknown fact, Redbeard, if you don't know Redbeard, he's one of the uh, engineers and you know, does a lot of the customer-facing products. His, the length of his beard indicates how long he has been at CoreOS. You can see him over here. You can tell he's relatively new at that point. Uh, but this was our very first meetup just under a year ago. Um, and since then, our community has grown. These are a set of the meetups that have happened in the um, recent past. Uh, the past year has been great for us. You can go to the community to find out more, um, but this has really exploded. Then we shipped the stable release. Um, just nine months ago, that was our first uh, major stable version of CoreOS Linux. Um, another little fact for you, if you're not familiar, the stable release version, um, the version of CoreOS, if you ever notice that, right now it's up to 600 and something, is actually the number of days since the CoreOS epoch which is July 1st, 2013. So it took us just about a little over a year. We almost did it on 365. Uh, just missed it. When it's ready, that's, that's <laughs> when we ship. Um, and so we shipped Stable just a few months ago. Um, shortly after that, Quay.io joined uh, our container registry product. Um, that is 
a place to share and build your, your containers. We actually have some news related to that today, which you can learn more about at the sessions that are coming up. We have some new features uh, with Quay uh, related to, again, giving you the best product for helping share and, and run your containers. This is all going to be covered in Jake's talk a little bit later, as well as the office hours upstairs, if you're interested in learning more about that. So we shipped our first stable version of etcd just five months ago. Um, etcd, you know, it's, it's a little bit odd, one, for a startup to build a, a container OS, um, but second, for to build a distributed database at the same time. Um, kind of the startup mentality is let's do one thing and do it well. Um, but our goals were a little bit bigger than just, uh, just etcd and, and, and just core OS. Uh, we wanted to build a bigger system. And so etcd is part of that. It solves some issues around distributed systems that we think needed to be addressed. Uh, and because of that, it's been adopted by over 500 projects on GitHub. Now mention it. It's an underpinning of projects like Kubernetes. Uh, it's used in a variety of products, regardless of you know, if, if uh, it's something you're using completely for free or is bundled as somebody else's product. It's become a, a piece of common internet infrastructure. And then we are glad that, that we put it out there. So, one month ago, we had some big news, um, and that was related to Tectonic. So Tectonic, Tectonic is Google's infrastructure for everyone else. From here on out, I'm going to call it Giphy, because I'm sick of saying Google's infrastructure for everyone else. Um, so Giphy is, this, is, a, is the combination of when we take Kubernetes and the CoreOS stack and bring it together into a product for companies that, that want to run their infrastructure in a similar way that companies like Google do. And so we packaged up Tectonic as a product that we're offering. Um, and I wanted to call out the distinction between CoreOS and Tectonic, just so you can get an idea how we think about this. So CoreOS Linux and the associated projects, etcd, Fleet, Flannel, Rocket, and so on, are all open source components that are intended for companies that are building systems. Many of you here today are using one or many of the components together in order to build uh, the, the projects that you want to build. And Tectonic is our version of when we pull all these things together uh, and, and bring it together as a product for you. We just, we just announced it. We're getting folks set up on it. Um, but I wanted to call it out that we are, are explicitly differentiating the brands such that our open source projects can become you know, common internet infrastructure that are reused in the way that you want. Um, and if you would like to come to CoreOS Inc. to get our help working with all of those tools, that's done under the Tectonic brand. All right, so set of tools that you've come to know. We have CoreOS, etcd, Fleet Flannel, Quay, Tectonic, over 100 other repositories on GitHub. Um, these, are, these are all of these different projects that we've put out in just under two years um, from that very beginning. And today I'd like to talk about some things that are going on with Rocket. So we built Rocket. Uh, we announced that for the first time at the beginning of December, just over, I guess that's five months ago now. Um, the project, the first line of code went in about three weeks before that, so this is a new one for us. We haven't shipped a 1.0 yet on it, but we have some um, exciting announcements. We shipped Rocket because we believe strongly in the, uh, in, in the needs of a, a secure a secure container platform, getting the, the basic security primitives right. We care about the needs of production and making sure that, that folks that are trying to put this into production in a, in a rigorous way uh, have a tool that they can go to. And then we care about interoperability. We think containers represent a shot at interoperability uh, that we haven't seen before and that we missed in the virtualized cloud. So on the interoper interoperability front, in order to have interop, you need to write down a standard. Okay, so you have to write down a specification. We got really caught up in this whole standard shipping container thing, but we, we thought we saw a gap, and that gap was around writing down what a container is, what the image format is, what the runtime is, and how you go and actually download and find these containers. And so how do we know that we've actually got there? Well, it should feel something like an HTTP or HTML5. These standards that are shared amongst a group of different products and vendors um, and are, are there for the end user so that the vendors can duke it out and provide the best, best you know, product uh, based around the standard. I think a good example of this is Chrome and Firefox. You know, these guys, for the benefit of their users, um, share HTML5, they share HTTP, um, but they are allowed to differentiate. And because of that, we have a more, a more secure, a faster, uh, a, more, you know, a better internet than we had because of that. Shared standards plus competition creates you know, better products. 
And so today with App Container, I want to make uh, some, I want to give you an update on, on where we are at towards our progress of a, of a standard container. First, um, here are a number of projects that have already announced support uh, in some form of it. Uh, just last week, Photon announced a, uh, or sorry, VMware announced a Linux container OS. A, a few folks here might be in the market for one of those. Um, but I'm, I'm bringing it up here because Photon, while they're targeting uh, the vSphere environments, uh, they shipping, they're shipping Rocket and supporting App Container from the very beginning. Mesosphere and Mesos and Twitter are collaborating on adding App Container support directly into, into Mesos. Um, so you'll be able to execute and download things there. And then there's been a number of projects that have emerged, such as Jetpack and Nosecone and LibC++. And these are things that have happened just, you know, pretty much organically after we did the announcement. Next, today, a new one is Kerma. Kerma is built by the team at AppSera. Kerma is a, a NIT system that allows you to directly boot into an app container and run app containers there. Um, AppSera guys, I recommend that uh, you hit up Leonard Pottering of System Fame. He's here. Uh, he might have a few war stories for you uh, about building a new init system. Um, but the Kerma guys the, is releasing this today. That is on GitHub. You can find it at GitHub slash AppSera slash Kerma. The next announcement is related to Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes has landed the majority of patches required to support App Container and Rocket natively, meaning Kubernetes users now have choice of, of which container formats they'd like to run inside. There'll be a talk later today led by Don Chen about this and the work that, that went into it. Um, but the code is done. Uh, well, not done. It's never done. Um, but the majority of code is landed um, upstream, and all of these projects are uh, that I mentioned today have, have code and substance and, and are, are moving forward, and Kubernetes is the latest um, to join. This work was, again, jointly developed between the CoreOS team and the Google team. All right, the next thing I'd like to announce is around community governance. Um, to have a shared standard, we need neutral governance. The goal is this, for this app container not to be a CoreOS thing. We want it to be a community thing. Um, and to do that, I'd like to announce some new maintainers. Um, so first, uh, Vincent. Uh, VBATS uh, from Red Hat is joining um, as a maintainer of App Container. Um, this is really important because Red Hat has been a major contributor to the container ecosystem so far, and we're excited to have their expertise. Um, Tim, Tim Hawkins, or Thawkin, um, is from Google. Google has the largest container deployment in the world, and again, he, he knows a thing or two about how that works and to have his, his um, influence on the project to make sure that we are building a great shared standard um, is very much valued. Charles is one of the early outside um, maintainers and I'd just like to thank Charles for his early support of, of the project. And then Jonathan, our lead on Rocket and Brandon, our CTO, continue um, heavily, to heavily contribute to the project. All right, so just to recap all of this, it's hard to fit all this stuff on one slide. Um, we have a number of projects that are out there today. Um, we have a, a new set of maintainers. There's all of their GitHub handles. Um, this whole thing started from a standstill just over four months ago. It didn't exist just over four months ago. Um, so I want these guys, if you, I want these guys to raise their hand who've contributed to this. If you've, if you've written code for Rocket, App Container, you've written your own spec, you fixed a spelling error, you've, you've changed an issue, or filed an issue, if you're out here today, could you guys raise your hand? Where are you? Where are you? All right, they're all kind of over here. <laughs> all right, guys, I think these guys deserve a round of applause. Thank you. All right, so just in a few short months, we've gone from that little garage um, to this event, but we are just getting started, and we have no intentions of slowing down. And so in that vein, I would like to say thank you all uh, for your support so far and your continued support. And I'd like to hand it off next to the App, uh, app Container panel for um, a set of discussions around that. So thank you, everybody.